the universe prolonged conclusively, encouraging altogether extra outstanding size. After this era, it endured to grow, however, at a more sluggish rate, ultimately converting into the universe we observe today. This is the inflationary hypothesis of the antique galactic blast, the most eminent and widely perceived hypothesis of how the universe began. However, for some physicists, this head speculation does not precisely portray the motion of our universe. They propose that the universe existed earlier than that point, extending on and on into the past as well as into the future. While the universe is extending nowadays, it was contracting earlier than the Big Bang. In this view, the Big Bang is not so much a bang as a leap, a moment when a contracting universe traded paths and began to create another time. As shown by their hypothesis, the universe could pass with continued development, probably observed by a breakdown in the far future, then one more bounce. Numerous physicists proposed the soar might be unending. This challenges the norm cosmological view wherein everything began with a Big Bang. The superphysicist Brian Cox also challenges the hypothesis of how things came to be, asserting that something cannot emerge from nothing. Adding to the stress, the James Webb Telescope has made startling revelations clashing with the idea that the Big Bang can be considered the beginning of the universe. These findings brought up the question, if the Big Bang wasn't the beginning of the universe, then what was? Could the universe eventually begin with a skip or something totally different? The idea that the universe had a beginning or a day without a yesterday as it was initially known returns to Georges Lemaitre in 1927. While it is an imperfect situation to suggest that the universe possibly had a beginning, that period of galactic history has little to do with the hot enormous bang that depicted our underlying universe. However, special area specialists and even a minority of experts still stick with the conviction that the Big Bang marks the very beginning of everything. All things considered, the definition is obsolete. The Big Bang is not the presentation of life as we might be aware of today. In fact, there is much evidence highlighting a non-solitary beginning of our universe. We never arrived at these conclusions based on no evident endpoint or high temperatures. Our universe is best described through an inflationary period that occurred before the Big Bang. The Big Bang is the result of what happened towards the consummation of advancement. Throughout development, the universe was totally void. No particles, no matter, no photons, just void space. Space itself was packed with an enormous quantity of energy at every region. This energy changed over time, extending in a quick and determined fashion. As the universe prolonged, those changes loosened up to larger extensions while new limited-scale changes were made to top them. This superposition of instabilities across scales is a characterizing detail of cosmological extension. It might end for arbitrary reasons not planned. If you lived in an expanding universe, you'd likely encounter nearby regions where augmentation reached a conclusion or the area amongst you and them prolonged emphatically. In brief, you could strive to understand what happens towards the beginning of a colossal effect. Before that place vanished completely from view, at first it consists of a small local region, perhaps no more significant than a human-sized hamster ball but possibly considerably bigger. The energy feature of space then gets modified over into matter and radiation. This change happens quickly, taking roughly but not instantaneously, as the energy bound up in space itself changes over into particles, photons, and more. The temperature quickly augments from only a few degrees above absolute zero to perhaps around 20 Kelvin over the same short time frame. Due to the giant measure of energy changed, everything moves close to the speed of light. All particles act as radiation with massive energy, whether they're massless or large. This change is called reheating, marking the end of development and the beginning of the stage called the Hot Big Bang. As development proceeds, you'll witness a vast change from all preceding situations. When the Hot Big Bang starts, the expanding universe quickly slows down after the hidden photo of improvement. In an inflationary universe, space expands definitively, with more faraway regions walking unendingly. When development ends and the Hot Big Bang starts, more distant regions will recede from you to an ever-increasing degree. Gradually, as time progresses, the part of the universe where development ends sees the extension rate drop, while the expanding regions surrounding it see no such drop. Under expansion, the space to any object would double after a certain length, and when that same amount of time elapses, that distance doubles again indefinitely. 
Once the Big Bang starts, this changes, as the expanding universe slows down after the initial second of improvement. Before the Big Bang, you'll encounter development cleaning off with neighboring regions. These regions where development ends will fill with matter, antimatter, and radiation, and broaden more slowly than the still-growing regions, leaving you in the expanding nearby as a regular neighborhood within space-time. These areas where warm Big Bangs arise become isolated from other places where development keeps, meaning they'll quickly recede from each other's view within the norm inflationary picture. For this reason, the development rate changes. There is little chance that any universes with separate warm Big Bangs will ever interact. The region where we come to reside gets highly fortunate, and expansion reaches a conclusion for us. The strength function of space itself gets changed over to a warm, thick, and almost uniform ocean of debris, with the primary imperfections and departures from consistency regarding the quantum modifications that existed and were loosened up across the universe at some point of development. The high-quality energy quantum fluctuations correspond first of all to over-dense areas, while the bad energy fluctuations get changed over into initially under-dense regions. These function as the seeds of large structures. We can't see these density fluctuations nowadays as they were when the universe initially went through the hot Big Bang. There are no visual imprints we can access from that early period. The first observable imprint comes from around 380,000 years later, after going through great affiliations. Although we can extrapolate back to recognize the initial density fluctuations, finding something consistent with the narrative of galactic development, the temperature fluctuations are engraved in the cosmic microwave background, CMB, providing evidence of how the Big Bang began. However, there are many inconsistencies between the CMB and our current model of cosmology. We are missing something, and these may be summarized in four inconsistencies. First, on particularly large scales, the universe is not behaving as expected. The light from the CMB is being lensed by matter between us and the CMB. This means matter acts like a giant lens, bending and changing the amplitude of the light behind it. The volume of this lensing is not consistent with our current model, representing a tremendous challenge for cosmology. Secondly, the two sides of the equator of the CMB sky have different common temperatures, conflicting with the expectation of uniformity within the universe's earliest stage. The assumption that the universe should have begun reliably leads to numerous inconsistencies. Third, the value of the Hubble constant, which describes how fast the universe is expanding, changes depending upon whether we measure it from the cosmic microwave background, CMB, or from neighboring stars. Together, these irregularities suggest we are missing something important in how we interpret the universe. One proposed solution comes from loop quantum cosmology, which originates from loop quantum gravity. In this framework, gravity itself is made up of particles called quanta, shaping the fabric of existence. In loop quantum cosmology, there is a smallest scale of space, the Planck scale, or 1.0 by 10 carat minus 35 meters. This means that the Big Bang could not exist in a universe defined by this theory. Instead, the universe could never reach an infinitely small dense point near the Big Bang. In loop quantum cosmology, when the universe was very small, quantum corrections predicted a repulsive force causing a bounce instead of a singularity. This indicates that our universe might have originated from a previous universe that shriveled and then expanded once more, similar to a phoenix rising from the ashes. While the idea of a cosmic jump is not entirely new, Loop quantum cosmology presents a mathematical framework to support it. Cyclic time, like the concept of a cosmic leap, is also found in Hindu cosmology, adding further weight to this concept. If loop quantum cosmology is accurate, the early universe might have had excessive energy and density. This condition would alter the CMB, appearing as slight differences in temperature across the sky. These variations, measured through the best power spectrum, could provide significant evidence of the universe's foundation and support the possibility of a leap. Typical loop quantum cosmology offers a compelling alternative to the standard Big Bang model, potentially resolving some of the long-standing inconsistencies in cosmology and offering insights into the origins of the universe. It also offers a promising cause of the third irregularity, the discrepancy in average temperatures between the two hemispheres of the CMB sky. The structure furnished by loop quantum cosmology addresses the primary two anomalies found in the CMB, the unusual behavior at large scales and the lensing effect. 
According to Dr. Venet Goind of the National Institute of Advanced Research, the possibility that these irregularities are not just measurement errors but originate from quantum gravity results taking place early within the universe is highly interesting. To verify such claims, significant evidence is required. The idea that the universe began in a cosmic leap has been proposed before, but its confirmation requires extensive research. Cosmic variance poses a challenge in this view, as our observations may be limited to specific parts of the universe, complicating our understanding. Dr. Dwayne Johnson, a co-writer of a substantial study and a professor at Penn State University, highlights the difficulty in validating such theories due to the large range. However, the incorporation of new possibilities like loop quantum cosmology and its significant implications holds promise in resolving specific cosmological issues. Despite these improvements, a significant question remains. Did the universe have a beginning at all? Proponents of the universe having a beginning insist that it did. But this raises questions about the nature of the event that started everything. Conversely, cyclic cosmology proposes an eternal universe constantly undergoing cosmic bounces. However, physicist William Kenney of the University at Buffalo identifies a fundamental flaw in this idea. Entropy. The degree of disorder in a system increases with each cosmic bounce, leading to a continuous depletion of usable energy. This entropy increase implies a beginning like a Big Bang, conflicting with the idea of an eternal universe. While new cyclic models try to address this issue by including expansive stages between bounces to burn up entropy, Kenny's research suggests that the universe likely had a unique beginning. Kenny's findings highlight the ongoing debate over cyclic universes prompting further investigation into their feasibility. Proponents of cyclic universes have yet to fully address this criticism. The scientific conversation about this topic continues to evolve, driven by the quest to determine the universe's origins and its ultimate fate. Quantum cosmology and cyclic models, which propose various mechanisms to address anomalies, have sparked interest among cosmologists. Nelson Dos Santos of the Brazilian National Institute for Space Studies who has delved into bouncing and cyclic models, notes that while loop quantum cosmology bounces address CMB anomalies, they may not be useful. Still, he remains confident in the possibility of a cyclic universe. According to Nelson, the existence of the universe is positive, making a cyclic universe invariably existing seem more feasible than one created at a specific moment. As a scientist, he remains open to exploring both possibilities. While the beginning of our universe remains a mystery, there has been intense discussion about its ultimate fate. The fate of the universe depends on its composition, including dark energy and matter, determining its destiny. Essentially, there are two primary scenarios, infinite expansion or contraction. In one scenario, the universe expands indefinitely, with stars eventually exhausting their fuel leaving behind stellar remnants like white dwarfs and black holes. But the fate of the universe depends on the nature of dark energy, a mysterious force driving the universe's growth. If dark energy remains constant, the universe's expansion accelerates, leading to a cold, dark big freeze as matter disperses and entropy increases. Alternatively, if there is enough matter, the universe's growth may slow and reverse into contraction. This scenario leads to the possibility of a cyclic universe model, where the universe undergoes cycles of expansion and contraction, never reaching infinite density or a specific beginning. Each cycle marks the start of a new era of existence, providing a more reassuring perspective compared to a cold, dark death. Regardless of the universe's fate, our presence at this unique moment is remarkable. It signifies our unique role within the universe and the critical role of knowledge in deliberating the universe's vastness and its inevitable reality. As we ponder the universe's nature, we are compelled to consider the meaning of our existence and the transient nature of time itself. Thank you for paying attention to this episode. Your support drives us to deliver high-quality content, and we appreciate your feedback on today's topic. Stay tuned for future episodes by subscribing and spreading the word. Until next time, keep exploring the mysteries of the universe.